Let's talk about rotational dynamics. Dynamics basically means we're using Newton's laws, which means we're looking at forces and accelerations, except in the case of rotation, we're actually looking at torques and angular accelerations. So just as Newton's second law for translational motion says that the net force is equal to mass times acceleration, in rotation, rotational motion, we have in place of force, we have torque. So the net torque is equal to in place of mass, which is a linear inertia. We have the rotational inertia. And in place of the linear or translational acceleration, we have the angular acceleration. So F equals MA becomes net torque equals I alpha. So let's take a look at an example problem, an Atwood's machine. Pretty classic example. So here I have a pulley. And let's just say I've got a mass here, and I've got a mass here. So we'll call this M1, and we'll call this M2. And I've got the pulley. The pulley has a mass, we'll call that MP, mass of the pulley, and a radius of the pulley of R. So it's a radius R and mass MP. And now let's say that M1 is greater than M2. So we're going to do this symbolically. I would like to find uh, the angular acceleration as they are released from rest. So the first thing I would do is I'm going to draw a diagram of the forces at the location where the forces are applied. So for the pulley, I've got a tension force here. I'm going to call that T1. And I've got a tension force here. I'm going to call that T2. Now since M1 is greater than M2, M1 is going to accelerate in the downward direction. M2 is going to accelerate up. The pulley will accelerate in counterclockwise fashion like this. So for M1, I've got force M1G down and T1 up. For M2, I've got M2G down and T2 pulling up. Then on the pulley I've got T1 pulling down and T2 also pulling down on that side as well. So to solve an Atwood's machine problem like this, I'm going to look at net force on object 1 equals the mass of 1 times A, and the net force on object 2 equals the mass of 2 times A, and then I'm going to look at the net torque on the pulley is equal to the inertia of the pulley times alpha. So this is the pulley, and this is M1, and this is M2. Uh, M1, sorry, M1 over here, and M2 over here. So on object 1, it's accelerating down, so the net force will be M1G minus T1. That's going to equal M1A. On object 2, it's accelerating up, so it's going to be T2 minus M2G equals M2A. And on the pulley, the net torque, remember, torque is R perpendicular times force. So the tension forces each produce a torque. But because the string is tangent to the circle, the, the cylinder, then we've got the radius is already perpendicular to the force. So it just becomes R times T1 minus R times T2 equals I alpha. So notice that T2 is pulling opposite the direction of the acceleration, and T1 is pulling in the direction of the acceleration. That's why it's RT1 minus RT2. Sometimes we like to say go minus stop equals MA. Similarly in rotation, go minus stop would equal I alpha. So if this pulley is a cylinder, a uniform solid cylinder, then the inertia of the cylinder is 1 half MR squared. In this case, that's mass of the pulley times R squared. And I remember that alpha is equal to A over R. So this becomes inertia, 1 half MP R squared, times alpha, which is A over R. Now, this is where some of the fun happens, because this R will cancel one of these R's, and I can also then divide every term by an R. In other words, all of the R's will disappear from this equation, leaving me T1 minus T2 equals 1 half mass of the pulley times the acceleration. 
So it's at this point where I have a system of three equations with three unknowns. So I'm going to do a simple substitute and solve. I'm going to solve this for t1. t1 equals m1g minus m1a. I add the t1 over minus the m1, m1g minus m1a. That's t1. t2, a little bit easier, I just add this over, m2g plus m2a. And then I'm going to simply plug these in up here to this equation to eliminate those variables. So I've got m1g minus m1a. Now minus t2, so minus this quantity. I'm going to go ahead and just distribute that minus to both terms. So minus m2g minus m2a equals 1 half mass of the pulley times a. So at this point, I can combine my like terms. I've got m1 g minus m2 g, and then I'm going to add, sorry, that didn't combine those. If I had numbers, I'd combine them. I'm going to add the everything with an a to get it over to this side. So add m1a, so I've got 1 half mass of the pulley times a, plus I've added m1a to both sides, and I have added m2a to get it over here as well. In other words, I want to get all my a's together on the same side and everything else on the other. So at this point, I've got m1g minus m2g, and you can factor that out and call it m1 quantity, or excuse me, m1 minus m2 quantity times g, but this is fine. Here I'm going to factor out the a, and I have one half mass of the pulley, plus m1, plus m2, and then I simply divide this over, and that will give me an expression for the acceleration. m1g minus m2g, all of this over, one half mass of the pulley, plus m1, plus m2, that equals my acceleration. Now, I've done this symbolically, and it looks kind of messy like this, but that's, that's just the way it is sometimes. If we had numbers, then at some point you could have subbed in the numbers. So for example here, if, if I knew this was five kilograms and this was three kilograms, I could put in the five here, and five times 10 is 50 if I use 10 for g. So tension would equal 50 minus 5a. So then I'd have some numbers and it would work out a little bit, a little bit quicker, a little more efficient. But this is what it looks like in symbolic form. So this is just an example of doing a rotational dynamics problem within an Atwoods machine.